guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's been so long since I filmed a video, but I'm back with a good video. So don't you guys worry, this one's gonna be good. Um, Basically what I'm doing, if you've been following me for the past seven months when I uploaded my video that like kind of just like randomly blew up out of nowhere, and I think it has like 167,000 views right now, but I'm doing an updated video of that. I use a completely different app now. So I wanted to make a new one showing the Adobe Draw app instead of previously when I showed Infinite Painter. It's still a free app, so that's awesome. I'm pretty sure it's just for iPhone, but I still use my iPhone, still use my finger to draw. I don't use a uh, Apple Pencil or anything and still use a free app. So keeping it simple for you guys, I show you how to draw an entire full picture in this video, which you guys have been requesting so much. I do have, I will link down below my other tutorials of more specific things like how to do eyes, how to do a mouth, how to do shading. I get really deep into specifics, but this is just gonna be like a general overview of how to do a digital illustration with Adobe Draw. And I hope that you guys find this super helpful. I love hearing your guys' messages in my DMs all the time telling me that how much my videos helped you. Um, it really means a lot to me. So feel free to DM me if you want. I hope that you enjoyed this video and hope you learned from it. Without me blabbing on for too long, let's get right into the video. So I'm opening up my Adobe Draw app and I'm adding a new thing, which is the orange plus button in the bottom. I'm pressing the plus again, adding an image layer from my iPhone, and there we have it. So I'm doing this picture of a brat style because I've been really into the Bratz vibe lately. And as you can see, I'm just dragging the draw layer on top of the picture. Obviously, so the drawing will go on top of the picture, get it? So now I'm just showing you how to color match, which is something I use all the time. So you can match the color in the photo, super helpful, super simple. I did this shading at the beginning, um, but just like ignore this because I actually deleted all of it like halfway through the video. So just ignore what I'm doing right now. But I'm just gonna explain to you guys why I'm using a picture of a brat doll to do this. I think for beginners, it's super helpful to use a brat style to like learn facial features, just because like since the brat style is kind of already animated, it makes it super simple to just follow along with their features. I just feel like if I was starting out again, I would want to learn on something like this. You know, I wouldn't really start off with like a full body picture with like a shirt and jeans and shoes and face and hair like that's just too much i think starting off with a really close-up picture is really helpful but anyways wanted to explain that but now i'm adding the highlights i always like to do that first the shadows and the highlights even though i deleted the shadows because i thought they looked bad anyways always start off with shadows and highlights and now i'm just going to be filling in her normal like skin tone color on the rest of her face basically connecting the line all around her face and then i will use the um feature where you can press and hold and it fills in the shape with color which is so helpful. You guys will see that in a second when I finish this. Um, I'm just gonna draw around her eyes as well, obviously, so I don't fill those with color. So I'm just drawing around her eyes. Now I'm taking a little bit of a darker skin tone and I'm doing the details around her nose. Again, this is why I like doing the breast cells because noses are so hard to draw. Okay, that looks awful. But the breast cells, they just like, you can't even see their nose. So it's super easy to just do a little bit of detail and it looks good. So again, good for beginners. Now I'm switching brushes to the tapered brush and I'm doing a little bit of like eyebrow strokes just to outline the eyebrows before I fill in her face with color just so I know where they are and like the shape that they have. That's like a little trick I guess I have. I don't really know if that's a trick or not, but that's what I'm doing. And then I am pressing and holding to fill and there you go. Now I'm taking the, her um, skin tone and I am just filling in like around her lips where I didn't get as specific with it. So I'm just tracing those out. And now I'm changing the color of those highlights. Obviously they were like way too harsh, but you'll see me playing around with colors all the time. Colors are a really hard thing to get, like different shading and stuff is super difficult. So always play around with it. Don't get discouraged if you don't get it on the first try because even I never do and I've been doing this for a year now. So <laughs> now we're moving on to the lips. So I'm just taking the color match tool and my tape tapered brush and I'm getting that dark color that's like at the creases of her lips and I'm just drawing over the creases again so easy with the brat styles to just draw over their features because they are so already like pretty much animated um so I'm just doing a little bit of a darker pink color at the top and bottom of her lips as it is on the doll itself and like around the creases and stuff and then I'm filling in the lips with the main color and then of course I will touch it up and fix it so I'm just adjusting the colors a little bit, filling in some little areas that I missed, just making sure that they look perfect. And then I am done and I am moving on to the eyes. 
So just a warning, this gets super messy and I have to like redo it a bunch of times. So just don't, you know, judge it at, at first glance, okay? But first I'm starting off with the eyeliner. Again, taking my tapered brush, love the tapered brush for eyeliner and eyelashes and just drawing around those lines that are already conveniently there on the brat style. As you can see, I'm kind of doing the winged little liner thing. Again, don't judge it. She looks bad, but she gets fixed by the end of the video, I promise. Hi guys, so I want to quickly mention if this video is going like a little bit too fast for you and you're kind of like, wait, like what? I What is she saying? I'm like lost. I do have a other tutorial video where I go through the absolute like basics of Adobe Draw if you are completely new to it. So I will have that linked down below if you want to check that video out first and then come back to this video once you kind of get the hang of the app. So if this is going a little bit too fast for you, check that out. I got you. So yeah. Now I'm taking a white color to do the highlights on the eyes. As you can see, super animated. I love it. So easy to do. Um, filling that in with white. And then I'm also filling in like the whites of her eyes. I'm just drawing a little line. Oh, it, that messed up. <laughs> that happens sometimes, you know, got to go with it. Um, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that again. Ready, white, perfect. Look at that, okay? Took a few tries, but we got it. So I'm just filling in the whites of her eyes using that um, tap and hold to fill feature, so helpful. And then of course, I'm just repeating the same process on the other eye. Oh, and also you can see I'm like filling in the pupils as well. I forgot to mention that, but yeah, fill in the pupils, black, of course. Now I'm doing the colored iris part of her eye. As you can see, she already has some nice like light like ombre in her eye which i love super easy for beginners um so i'm just basically color matching the light medium and dark shades that she has in her eyes and putting them on there it makes it look super realistic gives it some dimension which i love eyes are all about dimension so i'm just doing that and i'm going to adjust the colors as well a little bit too again whenever you color match and stuff there's like a 50-50 chance that the colors are not going to actually look that good together. So always just adjust it. Adjusting colors is like a huge part of doing these illustrations. So don't get discouraged. Just keep working on it. Even I mess up the colors all the time and I've been doing this for a year. So now moving on to the eyeshadow. This is where you're going to be like, Taylor, what? are you doing? Just wait, just wait. Okay. First of all, I should have outlined her eye crease. If you see like the crease in her eyelid, like where everyone's eyelid like creases, I definitely should have outlined that first and I didn't. And that really just ruined it for me. But anyways, I'm just taking that purple color that was on her eyelids, filling it in. Obviously this looks awful and I need to adjust a lot, but just, just wait for the final product. Okay. Um, it, I promise, I promise you have, you're doubting it now, but but she comes through, I swear. As you can see in this fast motion, I am making a ton of little tiny, tiny adjustments. That is totally part of doing digital illustrations. It takes a lot of patience and you just got to keep fixing things over and over and over again until they look good. So like, don't get discouraged if you have to keep like going over things or redoing it. Um, again, if uh, I forgot to mention this actually, but there's a back button at the top, that little arrow that's in like the middle top of the screen. That's the back button. And you can also, if you put two fingers on the screen and slide to the left, it will delete what you just did. And in order to bring it back, you can take your two fingers, slide them right on the screen and it will bring whatever you just deleted back. So that's also really helpful. So slide it to the left to delete and slide to the right to bring whatever you just slid it back or just use the back button at the top of the screen. But super helpful tip. Now I'm just adjusting more of the colors. I changed her skin tone a little bit, um, changed the highlights and shadows. I made her eyeshadow pink instead of purple. Um, and I'm just doing a little bit of color changing things, adding some last adjustments. And I'm also going to fill in her brows a little bit more. Remember how I did like that little tracing of the brows before we filled in her skin tone? I'm now going to take my tapered brush again and fill those in so they're nice and thick. This is one of my favorite tips for the eyes. So I'm taking my tapered brush, lowering the opacity to like, I don't know, like 20, I think. And see how I just did that line right under her lash line. And it looks like a little bit of a shadow at the top of her eye. This adds so much dimension and just like realisticness to the eyes. I think it looks so good. It's a game changer. So one of my top tips. 
Another thing is adding blush. So I'm taking my regular brush. I'm, I usually will color match the lip color um, just to get like a nice natural looking blush tone. And I'm putting the opacity all the way down. I usually do like between 5 and 10 depending on the skin tone. Um, but just doing like a little circle of blush on the cheeks again just adds a little bit more dimension to the face and gives it a nice realistic look. So that's another one of my tips for doing faces. And she has some little hearts on her cheeks uh, in the original photo. So I'm just redoing those. I think those are so cute. So I'm just adding little hearts on her cheeks. I think that's so cute. Honestly, I feel like that's going to become like a trend in like real life makeup. Like just putting like little things on your cheeks. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I think it's so cute even in like real life. Like not even if you're a brat style. Just like straight up in real life. Just every day you're going to Target with little, a little heart. Like why not? You know? Okay. Sorry. I'm getting carried away. Now here's where I'm like cleaning up the edges. And then I realized that these shadows that I drew are just not going to work at all so I end up just deleting them and making them skin killer so sometimes you just do things and you think it's a good idea and then you're like you know what no and that was one of those moments so we just had to work with it just go with the flow and I will fix all the eyeshadow and stuff but yeah you know I tried something new and it failed you know what are you gonna do and now I'm doing the hair. Hair is one of my favorite things to draw. I don't know why. I just love it. So I'm just color matching her brown hair with my tapered brush. Love the tapered brush for hair. It's a must have. And I'm just doing a little bit of little streaks in there of the dark brown. And then I'm going to color switch it and make it a little light brown action to get some dimension in there. How many times have I said dimension in this video? I don't know, but it's very important for digital illustration. So just remember that word dimension. It's essential. And I'm doing like a darker brown color in that part that's like kind of behind her shoulders um, just to give it some, sorry I'm saying it again, to give it some dimension. I'm so sorry. Now I'm just filling in all those little missing spots in her hair so it's nice and luscious. And then I'm going to take her skin color and do a little hair part down the middle, you know, okay. Now I'm just taking a color a little bit darker than her skin tone on her face and filling in the neck. And now I'm taking the color that I want the background to be, drawing a square, and then tapping and holding to fill in the square with color, even though the background is like super, like not even visible on this photo, but that's how you do a background. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys this tool, this brush I'm using. It's like a gray and white checkered brush. Basically it like erases whatever you do. So you can like use it to erase parts that you want to erase and um you can also press and hold to erase like the whole section like I just did right there so super helpful tool little life hack okay you're welcome now I'm doing her cute little hair barrettes I'm using a neon green because I love neon green and I'm using this like weird brush I don't even know what to call it it's a different brush it's kind of like a square top brush um so I'm using that to do her little hair clips it really just adds so much to the picture I just love it okay I love this color combination Upon doing some last minute edits, I decided to do a little bit of a lighter color at like the top of the eyeshadow. You see that little, little subtle change? So yeah, I decided to do that just to give it a little, little sum sum, you know? Now I'm basically just going through making sure everything is good, making sure I didn't miss any spots, I don't have any crazy lines anywhere, just making my last minute touches. And then we are done with the photo. And by the way, if you guys were curious, this took me um, the full screen recording without like speeding it up and editing it and everything was 35 minutes. So that's how long it took me to do this. Um, it did take me a little bit longer than usual. I don't know why. I was like struggling really hard with this, as you can tell by like how many changes I was making. Um, but it took me 35 minutes. So if you guys were curious about that, I don't know why you would be but so guys that was the video i hope that you guys liked it and learned something from it if you're new here feel free to subscribe for more content like this or check out my other tutorials if you want to learn more about digital illustration and of course follow me on instagram we just hit 2.5k so thank you guys so much for that leave a comment down below or dm me any video suggestions you guys have but yeah i hope that you guys like this video stick around for more and i will see you guys later Bye. You got it, girl, you got it. No baby in a bag in a burkin. No, not a five, put your work in. Doesn't know I love a mom to me a burger.